Hi there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty good. So yes, my name is Tony Bartram, and uh, I've been doing OrisCoS for about three years or so, so far. I found, when I came to it, that uh, the video is great, you've got 4K video, lots of capabilities that are really easy to use to create multimedia applications. But the sound, less so, so we were mostly silent. It's a system beep, for example, and um, if I wanted to play a sample, I had to go through a convoluted path of using a PC program to create a sound module to do that. Plus, I'm also a hobbyist musician. I write songs and create music and have a fairly decent sized collection of analog synthesizers. And uh, one thing we're always looking for is a different sound generator. And at RiscOS, I thought, would be a great place to put one. You have these sound and envelope commands that don't do very much. I thought, well, it's fun to link those things together. So uh, that's what I've done. Uh, we have typical synthesizer architecture of an oscillator, which vibrates to generate a waveform. And then we have the ability to change that, that waveform to modulate it. And then we can subtract harmonics from it to soften it, and also brighten it a bit with like, resonance or cue. And then we have um, an amplifier, which can change it from plucked guitar string through to a soft, sweeping string sound through to, say, a piano type of envelope. Yes, so on the BBC Micro, you had a narrow and a wide pulse wave, just a square wave, a simple one really, and you could modulate the pitch. And you didn't have a filter, and you didn't have a very kind of complicated way of describing the, the amplifier. So we have a more classical standard synthesizer, ADSR, so you would tack a sound which is as it comes into your hearing it. If it's a string, it will sweep in slowly. If it's a piano, it will be fast. It will decay away if it's a string, noticeably. It will be sustained whilst you hold the note, and then to put it to care away as you, as you wish to go to, to quiet. We have got an oscillator which is modelled on the Commodore 64 chip, which was designed by someone who went to found Ensonic, a proper synthesis. And he has some, some quite neat things in there. So we've now got a saw wave, which you might hear in strings quite commonly. We've also got a, a triangle wave, which is more hollow sounding. It also has the BBC Micro's modulating noise, which you don't have on conventional synthesizers, so you can do rumbles and bangs and all other cool fun stuff. You've also got something called pulse wave modulation, so you can go from a narrow wave through to a wide wave and sweep across. <coughs> that's a common synthesizer sound you'll hear, which is very popular. So that's quite cool. You've also got the ability to play samples, and you can loop them, so you can take a more complex waveform, fit like the Archimedes wave generator, perhaps, and that's how that sound works. But you can also just play a sample, say a voice or whatever and you can link that together with the rest of the framework. So you can modulate and change the filter, closing and opening it, changing the pitch and so on. You can also get the channels to modulate each other, and that can create bell like or science fiction type of tones. The waveforms are anded together, which means you have some other sort of slightly different waveforms. That was an interesting thing on the Commodore 64, so I thought I'd preserve that. So it's a bit of a fusion of sort of an Amiga, a Korg M1 synthesizer, uh, BBC Micro and uh, Commodore 64. The filter is a low-pass filter for two poles. It's got quite a clean sound and quite warm. But the key problems I was trying to solve was making the easy APIs we have available work and do something useful, as well as providing an easy way to play back sounds and to put them in applications. I wanted a bit more than the beat on risk OS when it went wrong. And I have a demo which shows perhaps not a completely road legal way of overriding it, but I have I've done it. Because that's fun. And so I'm hoping we'll hear a bit more sound and things. I thought of bringing back the sound of the Fax Cottage programs and also some of the typing things and drag and drop to get some sound. And hopefully we can link into a variety of programs or just use it to get children or uh, people understanding how you can generate some sounds. On the Pi, you have Sonic Pi as the current solution for that. This is like something for RiscOS, which is unique and a bit different. So, Rather than me standing and talking in front of the slides, you probably can't see because I'm too far away. Um, I will attempt to make some noises. I have got the examples folder from the current beta of my virtual sound chip, a sound module that uses shared sound. Right, let's just try something a bit different. So we do a chord looping running through the filter. We have two channels against each other, which are detuned, which is why it's what we call phasing or comb filter. You can turn that off, but it sounds like a guitar pedal. It sounds quite nice. So let's just turn the sample that's playing there. Sorry, this is a bit harsh. I'm just, I want to just make it 
make a beep when it goes wrong. If I run that, I think it complains, and we get a beep soon in the spot. If I run that, we have a slightly more <laughs> upset sound, but not just a beep. And what that's doing there is saying for a specific channel, sound and frequency overlay a sample. And it's doing it just with a shortcut, with star R bell, but I could genericize that, which might be a good feature to have, so you can have different samples of different notes. So very briefly there, because this could turn into PowerPoint with sound, um, which is perhaps not pleasant. Cosmic modulation, saw so wave trying on the So taking the high harmonics out. So that's just doing like modulation effects. And it goes on for ages. Just the reason why I'm doing this. Good. So are there any questions on what this can do? Could you join it to MIDI? You should be able to, absolutely. Because I believe there's a, a MIDI driver people have written on the forums. And the point is you can just listen on that for the input. Because the MIDI is quite straightforward to parse, I've written on the four. And then it can just trigger the sound. So you can actually use this. One of the best things I didn't mention about RISC-OS as a synthesizer is that it has very low latency. Windows tends to be very slow. At 30 milliseconds, AG, because I think it's going down to kernel, I'm running this with a shared sound interrupt, so it works really fast. OK, I'm conscious of time, because I was asked not to talk forever. I've uh, got quite a few games which I've got, and I'll briefly show you a little bit of those. The other thing I've done today to maybe bring more software into the market is to make it easier for people to, to write games. And what I've written is a kit, which I've sold out of today now. And what we have in here is a simplification. You've got a core library, which enables you to multimedia things like set the video modes, get decent error reporting back to you, play MP3s, things like that. And the next level up, you've got a little library for doing tile-based games, so a simple form of games is to have it, the screen subdivided into regions and being able to interact with those regions, it's like a map, basically. This is what this describes. It has a template which can be filled in, as well as an explanation of the sequence tutorial, effectively, of the library functions you can call. So we'll run one of those games. Right, so these buttons are in the library, as is the text generation and other screen modes and basic out and so on. So there we go, we have a little character, and you can squash these other little characters with the blocks. And I didn't design that because it used to be more finger. Although, I think the graphics and sound are more advanced. Yeah, I can write this all using the library, and um, the game is quite small and simple. The code's about 500 lines long. So I think at a level where it's easy to understand. This is like Lemmings, if anyone remembers that. So the game um, involves getting your characters to an exit without them dying and not particularly bright. But rather than saying one's going to have a particular characteristic or skill, I'm giving them objects to use or interact with. And that changes the nature of the problems you can solve. And it's quite fun. Just run the first one. These are my little mock top characters. This is an electric fan. To me, this makes perfect sense. It's like people find it surreal. This is, by the way, 16 million colours parallax scrolling. Yeah, it's all written in basic. Lots of the Pi one, which I'm not doing. Those sounds, of course, have been done with RBSV. And the music is done a very synthesized like that. And if I can remember the code, I'll go to my standard demo level that I usually don't do right when I want to demonstrate it. Okay. This is more elaborate. So you've got sticks of dynamite, brick walls, nice and wood, keys and doors and so on. If I can just do this quickly without getting what I'm doing. Let's see if I've got this right. It goes up there. I told you, see. When you want to demonstrate it, it doesn't matter, you saw how they died. Nice one, There you go. That's what I wanted to have. It's a bit cruel isn't it? I've lost the I'd like some more, I promise. Here we go. Electric drill. This is an RDSP sound. This is a drill. And we'll get another drill. Just going 
Oh, it didn't work very right. I was going to do a zombie game for this show, but then I'm cooperating on it. Okay. It's all makes sense, I think. Break a little way for them to go across. There are 30 levels in this game, plus 10 pounds. So yeah, get the idea. This is written using Plot 85 and a BBC Basic. So let's go to the demo level. There are 14 levels and two levels of difficulty. One's about 30 frames a second on the play one. And I've tried to keep everything running about the same. You can jump over gaps if you're reasonably quick. Red stops you. Of which you jump. That's a good faster. Uh, green acceleration, so it's not going to get into that. Fast pop on blue. Fast slow down. Perfect mix of level tape. There's one. It's a base for a game called Firma, and uh, it's not too complicated to say. Legends of Magic is slightly embarrassing. It has a 200 page novel on it, which is not embarrassing, I like that. But what it has is a not a particularly good leg move. It's an RPG style game, so you go around picking up objects and solving puzzles. Quite popular with children. Oh, I should mention that the engine under this is generic as well, and a lot of it is in data. I have my own little language describing the rules, etc. So it's a bit like a graphical text game, I suppose. Pick it up, use it. I pick up my wand. There's keyboard shortcuts as well, of course. I can go and generically use things. I'll go through here. It's awful. Here we go. Got an axe there. I've used P to pick up. You can now chop down trees. This is quite good. But I, I let main disappear because it's oh yes, I think the one electrocuted. That's an undead monk. So yeah, that's basically there are monsters around. There's also a second quest as well. Um, which involves collecting 121 items of treasure. And um, it's a decent sized map. Well thank you very much for coming to this.